Everybody looks nice today. Y'all look shining lights, beaming, look like you just came out of the presence of God. Because when you worship, he comes, he said he comes to dwell with us and be filled and to fill us. You know, when God comes into your and sit in your situations, you know, everything has to leave, right? Everything has to leave. The only thing is you have to believe it. Just you can't see it because he don't move just the way that you want to move. He moves in his time and his ways. And he does it perfect and complete. Now, you know that everything that's going on in this world right now, all the turmoils and trials and everything that's going on, of fear that's penetrating through this nation. It's not only in the nation, it's in the world. We have to come to the place of a standard and knowing that who we are and wherever we go at, that we do not walk in fear. Just because other people are walking in fear, we don't have to believe the lie. We have to accept because we see other people. And you got to understand, we're not the majority. We are the less of. So it seems like we're losing, but really we're winning. Because God is about to bring a big boom in this nation to change lives and change hearts and everything. Now, I wanted to let you know, all this havoc that's going on within this world of this Black Lives Matter, I'm black. That, that, that's what they say with my skin color. That's what they say in my skin color. But you got to understand, there's a, there was a guy that's running for president saying that if, if we don't vote for him, we ain't black. That's nonsense. See, it's not about color. It's about the human race. It's not about anything else. The devil likes to bring division and make us look in the mirror and see color. Because God don't look at color. He look at the blood. So if it doesn't mount up to what God says, don't follow it. Don't believe it. It's a hoax. No matter how it sounds and how it feels to you, it's a hoax. Can I get a little bit more mic, please? Just a little bit. Thank you. Because this word is true. And everything this word says never says about division. The only thing it says about division, a house divided cannot stand. So what's the purpose of bringing all the division about? Why is the Soros paying all this money to put people and planet in places to put uh, to make it look like black lives are, matter. Because you got to understand, they used the 60, what they did in the 60s for the civil right plan. And what they did, they turned it around and said, okay, we're going to do this here. We're going to implant people and do the same thing they did in the 60s. But this time, we're going to take control of it and make chaos on this land. Because you got to understand something. They do not want a righteous president to take office. Because is exploring the plan that they have to bring destruction. You gotta understand what the donkey stand for. Nobody understand. Uh, this is a jack. I'm not gonna say the last word. <laughs> it's a donkey, amen. <laughs> and you know, the political the political things that they do are not always been right. All the way back to Lincoln. You know, remember Lincoln was the first Republican president that came in the office. The Democrats came against him back then. And then everybody, everything that the Republicans tried to do to help the people, the Democrats always tried to destroy it. So you look at the major cities that you go, back, go up to, it's all in destruction. Baltimore, New York, Cleveland. Everywhere you see the Democrats that's running, it's destroyed. Newark, where I come from, it's destroyed. You, they try to make it look pretty, but the they destroy the factor of our God. They try to take God out of everything now, don't they? In the White House, everywhere you go at, they try to take our God out of it. Even on our money, where it says, in God we trust, they try to take that away. But we trust in the living God, right? Most of us that's in here should be trusting the living God. I don't know about everybody, but most of us should be 
trusting in the living God. Because you got to understand something. You have to be dis disciplined to know him. You have to take time to find him. And you have to take time to commune with him. So that you can have a relationship with him. As you speak to him, he can show you in the way that he wants you to, to see it. Amen? So we're going to talk about, in God we trust. And God, we trust. Because that's, that's what this nation was built on, right? We was, we was built on the foundation of God. But somehow the Masons and everything else came and crept in at the same time. You got to understand, the devil always come and interrupt the plan of God. He did that in heaven, didn't he? It started right there. The main deception. He was the main deception. One that got deceived, right? Now he has a lot of followers that's being deceived to follow the plan. Amen? Let's go to 1 John 5. All this craziness. Can't believe everything. Another thing, um, you notice that they always have cameras right at the time when something about to happen. Don't you know that was planted? Every time you see something, they don't show you all the, be you know, they don't show you the beginning of the process or the end. They just show you the place that will make you upset. <laughs> and then you go, oh, man, da, 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 da. They got you again through deception. The media is, is good at that. They always got clips. And sometimes they use false clips from something else that happened years ago. And they put it in the plan because they want you to believe. Because they're the lying media. Amen? So one thing you have to always remember. Because of all the chaos and everything that's going on out there, what you know, you got to keep your mind on is, who do you put your trust in? Who do you really put your trust in? You put your trust in man? Or you believe in what God says? Because he said in his book already, all this stuff was going to happen. So we should not fear. We know that the end is coming. We know that we're going home soon. Don't get comfortable here. This is not our home. Don't get making plans that you got something in the future that you're going to plan and build all this stuff. Live for the now. Because if you don't live for the now, your tomorrow's may not be promised. You fulfill what you need to do today for your tomorrows. God has planned for those days to come. Amen? That don't mean that it's going to be fun because every time you got to work for God, it's not always fun. But it's, there's a purpose behind it so that he can place something more in you. Amen? It's not always fun. Trust me. But when you're done with it and you look back, you can see what God did to do the work that he did in you. And this could be a change in you that you never had, that you never thought that you could ever have. Amen? Okay, is that where we're at, 1 John 5, verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the what? The world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, you have to believe, don't you? Now, you got to understand, the enemy will bring fiery darts to you to, to bring memory lies to you and make you have false imaginations of things about people, places, and things. He, he's good at that. He'll tell you that, man, you can, you can go ahead and, and have a sip of wine. Go ahead. You okay? Nothing going to bother you. See, it didn't affect you the first time. See, you good. You're good. Not knowing that he had plans down the road. When you know that's your weakness. Now, everybody has a weakness in that, but majority of people in this room have weakness over drugs and alcohol, don't they? Huh? Amen. So don't pick that stuff up. It ain't going to work. That ain't going to work out too well. <laughs> Seriously. I'm a little witness on that too. Our faith overcomes 
the world by faith, by every decision, every decision. By faith, we're either going to go by faith or by fear. One or the other. Either you're going to be listening to the voice of God by faith, or there are going to be many voices that will bring fear. And I'm going to tell you something. When they come, you can't get no peace out of it. You're all over the place trying to, trying to figure things out on your mind when you're supposed to believe in what God said and just hold on to that. Because a lot of times, those voices that you hear that's pleasing to the flesh is really killing you. Amen? You must believe everything he did is for you. Everything. He, every little dot, tittle, comma, and everything that he has done was for all of us. Because God is not about self. He's a God of giving. He gave, he gave, he gave, he said, while we were in sin, God demonstrated his love towards us. So that he thought about us when we were hopeless. When we couldn't see past our nose. When we were spinning in the whirlwind and couldn't get out of it. Anybody been in the whirlwind? Anybody try to get out the whirlwind and couldn't? Seems like the more you try to get out, the more it go faster. Yeah, those things. Remember, you got to put God and trust in him because anything else will fail. Uh, let's go to verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does, one does not touch him. Now, it's not a good thing to know that if you keep yourself in God, everything that the enemy has planned, it can. It, the word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That means that there's going to be a weapon that's going to be formed against you. But it cannot prosper in you if you're connected to, to, to Christ and the anointing. We know that we are of God and the, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Do you believe that right now? Do you see all the things that's going on in this world right now? I'm talking about this world is wicked. There's so much stuff on the internet, it blows my mind. I mean, I, I just go and just try to find something, you know, to buy or something, and then something pops up. I'm like, I got to get past all this junk just to get what I need. There's so much junk out there. And you got to be strong in the faith to overcome the junk. You got people that you work with. They're full of junk. You got to understand, you got to overcome that. If you're not prayed up when you go out, out that door, something might come back with you. And you might not be able to overcome it that day. And you have to repent and fight to get back to where you need to be. Amen? And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. That we may know him who is true and we are him who is true. And his Son, Jesus Christ, that is the true God and the eternal life. Now, unbelief brings sin. Anytime that we doubt God, we allow sin to come in. We have, I don't put your hands up how many times we have doubted something that God showed us. First you say, yeah, God showed me that. And next thing you know, then where are you going? Think God just showed you that? Then where are you going? I got something to do. Anxiety comes up. Stress comes up. Fear, worry. Everything that's come up. Those are false voices. They're not God's voices. Because if you ain't got true peace within you, then something else has 
took, stolen your peace from you. Amen? We must separate the things that we hear and keep yourself from unbelief. If you still want the world, you will die. You will die. If you don't die now, you'll die later. But one thing you will do is die. Either you die spiritually or either you die physically. There's going to be a death somewhere because something's been stolen. Amen? If you're walking in God, there will be no worries. If you're walking in God, there'll be no worry because he's right there be before you. You know that he got your back. You know that he's, he's your comforter. You know that all the things that he's done in the past, if he did that back there, what do you think he's going to do in your presence? If, you, if God's for you, oh, y'all know the word. Y'all spoke it. If God's for you, who can be against you? You. <laughs> If you don't deny yourself. Amen? Because we could become our worst enemy. I don't need nobody else to make me mess up. I could do that all by myself. <laughs> Sometimes I shake my head. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but I go and say, oh, Lord, have mercy, because I know I need to keep the blood on me to keep moving. Amen? Let's go to John 8. And God we trust. John 8. Thank God for total freedom. I always come up and say thank God for total freedom. Because you got to understand something. The word we get here, I haven't gotten it from nowhere else. It's so, it's so, it's so out forward, but at the same time, it's so where you can understand it. And when you leave here, there's so much conviction. If you don't leave out here convicted in certain areas that you lack in, then you missed it. Because you got to examine yourself. Stop looking at other people and look at yourself. Find out what's going on with you. Then you can overcome other people. Then you can overcome other people. Because God's not going to change you just because you want to change. You're just going to have to deal with the, the fact that it's before you. Now, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You got to keep moving forward because you move backwards. The devil got that place, and he will take ground. So you got to keep fighting to move forward no matter what it looks like. You know, there's a time when the pastor told me something, and I stood before him, and, I, and I, all I could say was, I trust you, Lord. <laughs> I had to put my hands up and surrender. I trust you, Lord. Because my flesh did not want to hear it. But I had to get past that and remember, I got to trust you. I got to trust you. I got to trust you. Even when I fail, I got to trust you. Because I know, I know that you will bring me back up. You will get me right. You will bring me to where I need to be at. I got to trust you. I can't let go of you because I can't lack without you. Amen? Uh, verse 31, as he spoke these words, many believed him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed. I just want to stop that right there. If you abide in my word. You know, he said, if you abide in me. I will abide in you. You are the branches. I, he, what he say he do? I purge them. So that means that we're going to go through some stuff if we abide in Christ. He's going to make us feel some pain. And because he's trying to, what he's trying to do is purify us. Clean out that old junk so we can get closer to him and closer to him. Because he can't deal with the junk that we got. You know, he said, you want to come close to me? You know how we say, Lord, I want to get close to you. Okay. 
Okay. I'll tell you what. This is what I'm going to do. He ain't going to tell you what you're going to do. <laughs> but when he does it, then you be like, this, why is all this stuff happening to me? Because you said you want to get close to him. Amen? So go through the stuff. Don't be a coward and run. Because all you're going to do is run right into the wall. And it hurts. It hurts when you fall. I promise you that. It hurts. Because now fear comes back on. You worry about how people think about you. You worry about what you're lacking now because now the, all, everything has been, all your weapons has been falling off. Now the enemy knows. And now you can't fight when you once knew how to fight. It's, it's bad to be in a battle where you know that you can't win. Amen? Now, I, I'll give you a quick illustration of something real quick. I was watching something, and it was, and it was a true fact that, you know, in the boxing ring, everybody say boxing is brutal and everything and, and fighting and everything. But I remember this one time, Ho Holy Holyfield had to fight Tyson. And Tyson came against his God. He talked junk about God and everything. And when Holyfield got done with him, it was so bad that he had to bite his ear because he couldn't take the pain that God was pushing through Holyfield's fist. And when it was all said and done, and, they wanted, and, then, and the announcer was talking to him, he was saying, all I do is give God the glory for this. God did this. He said, but what you did, what was your tactic? It was God. It was God that did this. It wasn't me. It was God. See, he gave God all the glory for his victories. He gave him God. There's many times, there's other fighters that out there that had to fight opponents that could beat them. But God came in to show them who was in control. Amen? So don't fear about what's going on out there. I drive trucks all around this, all around Orange County, Seminole County, Osceola County, wherever county there is. And I go in the homes and everything. People got masks on and everything. I go and say, hallelujah, come and give them a hug, and they, they jump back and everything. I'm like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I say, you believe that lie? Do you believe that lie? Then we have to talk to them. Some of them touch and agree with them. Some are Christians. But they, they, they believe in the forces of evil that are spoken to them through the media. Because they don't have the sermon to know the difference. What is clean and what's unclean. What's holy and what's unholy. Because some of them have not been taught because their shepherds are walking that way. Amen? So thank God we have a shepherd that knows the truth. That shows us the truth. So when you get done, you walk out there with boldness. No fear, man. I walk around with no fear. When they tell me I have to put a thing, I'm like, man, I don't want to wear this. But at, at times I have to because I have to get a job completed. But boy, when I'm done, that thing is flying in the air <laughs> because I don't believe in that thing. If God's for you, who can be against you, right? We must believe everything he said. He said, then we will be free. It's about God's raising power. That's about what it's all about. It's about his raising power. If you're walking in God, call those things not as they are. All right? I'm going, let's go to Psalms 91. I want to go there. Lord, remind me of that this morning. I hope everybody speak this every day. Because this is what we are supposed to be living. This is what we're supposed to be living as we go out in this world today. Because this is troubling times right now, isn't it? Everybody's walking in fear. People are lacking finances. Children are out of school. You know, when children are out of school and they have time on their hand, you know 
know what time it is, right? Just take yourself back. <laughs> and you, know, you got to understand something. There's more trouble in kids today than there ever been before. There's another thing that the devils like to do is divide families. When I grew up, there was a mother and a father and the children. The father was there to discipline, to keep rule over the house, to protect the house. Now the mother has to do it all. Now, you know, in the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, lesbians are, are running that movement, a lot of them. And you see one parent and two children. That's not the way God formed families. So even by seeing that, you can see the lie. Amen? Just want you all to know that. Be aware of the things that's going on. Don't go by skin color, because I got a lot of enemies in this skin color, too. A lot of enemies. I don't go by the color of a person's skin. I go by their integrity, their character, and who they are, what they believe in, and who they believe in. Amen? Let's, let's all read this together, because some of y'all might have missed it this morning. <laughs> I who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of Almighty, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perils of pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows fly by day, nor the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand. But it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. In their hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I shall tread upon the lions, the cobra, the young lions, and serpents. I shall trample them the foot. Because I have set my love upon him... Therefore, he will deliver me. He will set me on high because I've known his name. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble. He will deliver me and honor me. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Now, every morning when you read that and speak that, do you believe it? Because if you believe it, then you'll be walking in it. And you won't be walking in no fear because you know he's with you. He's beside you. Pestilence, diseases, all that don't have no power over you. You have power over it. Amen? Let's go to Mark 5. Verse 35. And God... We trust. Now, let me tell you something about being in God we trust. You know that the dollar bill, the quarter, the dimes, and all that has the currency says in God we trust. But that value of it doesn't change, does it? Your value doesn't either. You've been stamped and sealed. And You've been still by him. So if you're still by him and he took the price to die for you and he took the whipping for you and he said and he put the cross on his back and carried it for you. Don't you think your value is you're valuable to him? You're very valuable to him. All he wants is your love. That's all he wants. If he gets your love, that's all he wants. Because if you love him, you won't disappoint him. You know when you had that first girlfriend or your first boyfriend? And you was so in love. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't eat. <laughs> you couldn't sleep. You be on that phone all the time. Well, yeah, you got the phone. Well, we didn't have cell phones back then. But you get to a pay phone real quick. <laughs> <laughs> You're writing love letters. 
That's what God wants. That's what he wants. He don't want to lose that love with you. He wants to continuously do that to you. That's when he always touches you with giggle bumps and everything when he blesses you. Oh, God, you, you, man, I can't tell. You know, sometimes God do stuff to you, and you, you can't hold it, and you got to tell somebody because it was so awesome, something that you didn't even imagine. You were not even asking for it. It just came. Yeah. That's what he wants to do to you. But at the same time, he don't want you to look at his hand. First seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all things shall be added unto you. How you seek after his righteousness? Seek after his face. Take some time in your daily day. Talk to him. Man, that's my favorite tongue. Because I don't understand anything of it. I ain't got to figure it out. I ain't got to think it out. It's a heart to heart. And he understands everything I said. And I know that the other one doesn't. <laughs> Amen? Where we at? Mark 5? Thank you. Let's go to 35. While he was still speaking... Some came from the ruler of the synagogue house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble your teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid. Only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wallowed loudly, well loudly. When, they, when he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? This child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, but when he had put them all outside, you know, God kicked them out. He said, Get out. I can't work with unbelief. I can't work with unbelief. So how do you think about us? He can't work when you're unbelief. I remember when I was in the world, I kept I always said, God, let my belief be more than my unbelief. I, had to say, I kept saying that when I was in the world. Let my belief be more than my unbelief. Because I knew my unbelief would stop me from believing. And by that, it was stopping you from doing what you need to do in me. Amen? So you have to fight to understand. God, even Jesus had to kick him out. So if he had to do it, how much more do we have to kick out unbelief in ourselves? Amen? He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was laying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talithia, Kuma, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should show it and said that something should be given to her to eat. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Fear will only bring bondage. And it will lack you from the substance of God. It will lack it. Because what fear promotes? Pride. We get so comfortable. Here we get so comfortable in God because we're always in worship and we, His presence is always around us and everything that we think that we can do it on our own strength. And, we, and then if we succeed, then we just look at ourselves and get puffed up and, and forgetting that all that can be done without through God's hands. So the devil sometimes can you bless you too now. So you have to have discernment in knowing who is doing the blessing. Because the devil, God will step back because he's not going to force himself on anything. But he will 
try to interrupt by telling you, hey, you need to stop. You need to stop. And then you don't listen. He'll just get the whip and paddle out. <laughs> get you a little spanking. You know why? Because through that, he's just trying to love you back into him. Correction is sometimes good for us. Because without the correction, we'll be lost. And whether you don't correct him, then he don't love you. I'd rather him correct me. It's not, it'll hurt, but like Kate said, it hurts so good. <laughs> I just look at her. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it hurts so good. Let's go to Matthew 8. Now, in the Old Testament, it always spoke about trust. And in the New Testament, it talks about faith. They go hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. Trust and faith is the same thing. Faith and trust is the same thing. See, faith came from God's resurrection. Trust came before he came to the resurrection. If you look in the Old Testament... You don't see faith. You look in the New Testament, you see faith everywhere. You hardly see trust, you see faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of the things yet not seen. Hope for. Present. Things not seen. Future. Don't get slack daisy of being believing that all you have is right now. It happened to me one time. I'll tell you real quick. I remember when I was working, God gave me a dream and everything. I didn't understand. I understood some of it because I, it manifested. I seen the dream. I lived through the whole dream. And I started complaining because I thought I was going to be stuck in, in this job. And I thought that was all that I had. That's all I was going to be at for the long time. I fell because of my groping and complaining. I know what caused it. It was my groping and complaining. God was doing all kinds of signs and wonders around me. But I still wasn't grateful. I wasn't grateful for what he already had done. And so as the thing completed and everything, it made me realize that you got to be mindful of your words. Because sometimes you can speak things right into your life that is not supposed to be for you. I have seen that happen too. Speaking words, and it came immediately. And I was like, oh. And I was like, oh, no. I, called, I told Pastor Valley, he started laughing at me. Because <laughs> I spoke it in, not knowing. And, and I had a brother with me. He said, oh, Dave, you better be careful. You better stop it. I'm laughing. <laughs> Not taking seriously the words. How many times you said something and you say, I should have listened to what I said. I should have listened to what I said. Didn't know that the Holy Spirit was speaking through you. Amen? Matthew, where are we at? Matthew 8, 7. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Am I right there? Yeah, I guess I started there. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should. This was a centurion at first. And he had a servant that was sick. And he was a man of authority. I'm going to just make this quick. He was a man of authority. And he knew about authority. He knew that when he spoke a command, that it would go forward and be, and be done with. And he saw Jesus walking with authority. You know, the world sees you. If you're walking close to Jesus, they see authority. There's, there's people that come to you and say, can you pray with me? You know why they say that? Because they see authority. They see that there's somebody that can reach to Jesus for them. Don't you want to have somebody that, if you need prayer, that is not just going to the ceiling? 
for us going to heaven. Amen. He says, so this, let's go back to verse 8. It says, the satirian answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and make my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And my servant do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, but surely I say to you, have not, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the son of, of the kingdom will be cast into the darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the satyrian, go your way as you have believed. So let it be done for you. Hallelujah. Your faith can bust through and make someone else whole. By him standing the gap for his servant, his faith, he went to Jesus and his faith made someone else whole. How many else we know of family members or somebody that we've been praying for? As someone that we love, we hope to see them get made whole, are healed, are delivered, and free. Our faith. You stand, touch, and agree with him. You can see them get whole and healed by your faith. That's by trusting in who? God. You got to trust him. Can't go by what you see and feel. Psalms 34. I thank God for total freedom. People can say what they want to say about total freedom out there in the world. Those who left here in anger and bitterness and everything. It doesn't matter. God is in this place. God is changing lives. I'm a witness. 28 years bound by drugs and alcohol. Running drugs. Running the streets. Didn't know which way I was going to live or which way I was going to go. I was a pastor's kid. So, you know, being in the church, you know, as soon as they let me go, I went 100 miles an hour forward. Even in the church, I was selling drugs. Yeah. I was a heathen. Anybody know heathens? Anybody got heathens in their family? So if God can change a heathen like me, a heathen like you, how much more can he catch another fish? Amen? How much more? You just got to believe. You just got to receive his promises. You got to believe what he says. And don't go by how you feel. Don't go by what you see in front of you. Go by what his truth says. Because only truth will set you free by what you follow through. You have to follow through with it. So it can be complete. Because your actions speaks louder than words. Amen? Psalms 34, verse 12. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from what? Evil. And your lips from speaking. Now I'm going to talk to the discipleship house and I'm going to talk to the girls' house. Which way am I going to look first? I'll look both ways. Y'all got to understand something. When you're in that house, you need to kick the world out you. What you learn in that world doesn't work in that house. You have to separate that from the world and uh, start understanding how to live in a godly Christian life. Because now you are representing the kingdom. And if you don't practice it in the house, you'll never know how to do it when you leave out the house. 
Because they'll eat you alive and renounce your Jesus because how you walk. Because they're watching you, how you talk, and how you move, and how you speak to others. I'm telling you, if you don't practice it in the house and get before the Lord and be serious, you'll lack it out there. I promise you that. Because the devil will steal it quickly of the little bit you have. Because the so, cause you'll be a soil for faith instead of being dug underneath. And dig deep into the faith that you need to uphold anything in the wiles and the tricks of the enemy. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And the ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and they deliver them out of all their troubles. How many of y'all want to get out of all your troubles? I know some of us have got troubles, don't we? Anybody here that have no troubles? Okay. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such have a contrite spirit. Many are the affliction of the righteous. So if you're righteous, you're going to have some afflictions, don't you? That's, he didn't say many. He said, I mean some. He said many. But the Lord delivers them out what? Out of them all. He guards all his bones, and not one of them is broken. Even shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Amen. God has it all in control. All you have to do is continue the effort. That's all you got to do is just continue doing the effort. He got it on control. Don't you know God is on the throne? Don't you know that he knew that all this stuff was going to happen before it happened? For those who were in the disciples' house and the, and the girls' house, don't you know that you was going to go through this stuff before you got here? Don't you know that? He already knew what was going to be said before, and he knew what you were going to get offended by. You know why he allowed those things to happen? So you go to him. Not to go to somebody else. Not to go to another brother that's at the same level you at. <laughs> and you pile all your junk onto him. Now he's carrying your stuff and his stuff. Instead of him saying, man, let's go pray. Let's pray about this. And you walk away and say, I don't want to pray about it. Well, then you don't trust God. Because you got, that's the only way you're going to get to him is through prayer. Worship. Do something that's positive. Don't do the same thing you did when you was in the negative. Negative and negative don't make no positive. Only positive and positive makes positive. Amen? Second Corinthians 4. All that woes is me. It ain't going to do nothing but bring harm to you. The woes is Mises. God is in control. Second Corinthians four seven. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus. We are what? Always delivered to what? Death. What that mean? That we got to die. 
You got to die. <laughs> for who? You're dying for Jesus. You're dying for Jesus so your character can be come up. So you can be changed. You got to be changed. You can't stay this. You can't stay the same and, and live in this place. I'm telling you that now because everybody will recognize it because everybody else is trying to change, it, especially the older guys that's here. They're slowly trying to change. And those who are faltering back, they got to fight to get changed more. Because what was lacking was lacking. They missed something. So you got to dig deeper and keep digging because the well's deep. It's deep. And don't let position fool you. God put people in position to expose them. What they're lacking too. Me standing up here, there's a lot of things in my, my skeletons in the closet that needs to be washed out and cleansed. There's always something that's removed, but the enemy tries to bring something else in. So it was my job to keep that what's trying to come in to stay out. So that I can be a, a help for you. when y'all come in, for people I meet out in the street, so I can be a bear witness for those who are lost and those who are saved. Because those who are saved need encouragement. Amen? They, and, and sometimes we need encouragement. We might be somebody out there that is just like us that can encourage us if our heart is open to receive it. Because if you have a heart of stone, you, nothing will be able to come in. Because of the ignorance of your, of your thoughts and imaginations. Amen? Where are we at? Verse 12. So then, death is working in us for life in you. Our knowledge isn't power, it's God's. So all the knowledge that you got, it's not yours. That wisdom's not yours. That understanding is not you. That's God's that he placed it in you to use it for his purpose and his plan. Amen? The more we know about God, we will know how free we are. Then you'll start understanding how free you have became. And you won't become grumbling and complaining for where you, you're at. You'll see how far God already took you from. But each day that you had total freedom, you should be taking at least an inch forward or a step forward. Because behind you is past. So you're making a distance from your past going towards your future. No looking back. Only time you look back is to remind you where you came from so you don't go back there. And learn from it. Amen? And learn from it. If we are not dead to self, then he's not alive in us. Amen? Let's go to Ephesians 4. Verse 11. Everybody there? And, he's, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the working of ministries, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the, of the knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man, the measure of the statues of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning and craftiness of the seaful plotting. There's a lot of that going on right now. A lot of deception is on this earth right now. Plotting and deception. Because like Pastor said, it's very true. They are activating all this stuff to come against us. To come against the Christ that we believe in. Come against Jesus. 
All the stuff that's going on. Because they're Satanists. They don't believe in Jesus. They believe Satan's their God. And they take all the instructions from him. So all this turmoil and, and everything that's going over the land, you know that has to be Satan. Because that is not our father. Our father didn't do that. But he's allowing that to happen so, and preparing us so that they come. The trust in God that we have in us and with that we believe in our Father, they will see within us and they'll say, I want what you got. I want what you got. I need help. And you'll be available for service because you know who you are in him and your true identity because you know that God's for you and you'll be able to bring him to the Jesus you know. Amen? It's not about a position of office. Everybody thinks that when they become a Christian, okay, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. No. You're going to be whatever God wants you to be. Just practice righteousness. Just practice righteousness, and then you're in God's will. Just practice righteousness. That's what you got to do. Then God will send you where you need to be at so that you won't bring shame to his name. Amen? But it says in verse 15, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ, for whom the whole body joints and knit together by whatever joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself and love. That means we all have a part in this. Each and every one has a part in this. Nobody's job is too little to God. You remember uh, Friday when God said, don't despise small beginnings. Because your small beginning is big to him. It's big to him. Because you got to start somewhere. A little fire can cause a what? A forest fire, can it? All you need is a spark. Amen? All right, let's go to 2 Timothy 2. Everybody okay? Y'all getting this? Are y'all getting this? You sure? You will be tested. I will be tested. We all will be tested. Amen? Like my wife would say, you, you spoke about that. Now look at you. <laughs> you got to understand, you got, the wives are there for a reason. To make you look at yourself. And the first thing I have to do is go, up. Oh. <laughs> hey, it goes both ways. Hey, when one's, one's weak, the other one should be strong. Amen? I thank God for my wife. She made me come up here and be dressed up today. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling on you. <laughs> Because you know me, I would come around with raggedy pants and. Gotta understand, when I was in the drug world, I used to dress colors up and down, all the way up and down, all the time. And when I came to Christ, I threw all the jewelry and all that stuff, didn't matter to me no more. That's come you don't see me wearing jewelry. I had that already, I did all that stuff already. It's old to me. It didn't do no purpose for me anyhow. All it did was bring me fear anyhow from God. Now, I wasn't even worried about the police. I was worried about the ones that I knew, my associates, the ones that I hanged around with, what they was going to do because jealousy runs ra rapid. Amen? Jealousy runs rapid. It happens here in the body of Christ too. But the thing is, it's different. Because now you're armed. You're dangerous. You ain't got to do the, the fighting physically. You just go in your prayer closet. Stay with him for a while until you can get it off of you. And come out and be whole. And keep on moving forward. That's the main thing of the goal today is keep moving 
forward and ask the Lord, what's next? What's next? What's next? Because there's always something else that he's going to do. It might be in the same place that you're at, but he's going to do something more. Because he's a God of more, isn't he? Amen. 2 Timothy 2.14 them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruins of the hearer, but be diligent to re present yourself approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and idle babbling, for they will increase to bring more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Humanists and philistists are of this sort who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the, the faith of some. Now, if you ever run to somebody that's just trying to destroy your faith, rebuke them. Get away from it. Because your faith matters. That's the only thing that holds you. It's faith. If you have faith, you can't please God. Because God is faith. Amen? So somebody trying to steal your faith, you get away from that. You fight for your faith. Like Pastor had that teaching. Fight for your faith. You fight for it. And don't give it and surrender it up for nobody. Not even to yourself. Remember, I told you, you're your worst enemy. Amen? How many of y'all talk to yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the only one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. The Lord knows those who are his. The Lord knows those who are his. So he knows you if you're connected. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in the great house there are not only vessel of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some of honor and for some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master purpose for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Out of a what? That's right. Out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and ignorant dispute, knowing that they generate strife. And the servant Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach what? Now, teaching patience is not being up here to teach patience. Teaching patience is a lifestyle. You have to live it. You have to learn how to learn to have patience with other people. Because you got to understand something. God is working on each and every one of us in different ways. And sometimes we have to, hey, when you're married, you have to learn to have patience with your wife. And your wife has to have, learn to have patience with, with the, the husband. You know, the women get together and they say, yeah, that, that man. <laughs> and the guys go, well, they don't say nothing. <laughs> They're afraid he might get back to the wife. No. <laughs> Just having some fun. <laughs> but it's so true, though. How are we? But you still have to learn how to. Uh, <laughs> you still have to learn how to teach patience in your walk, you know? And even be patient with your own self, you know? Because, you know, sometimes we, we'll make a mistake and say, I ain't going to do it again, and the next thing you, it happens again. And you got to repent again. And you got to repent again. But you got to keep on moving forward. You got to keep on fighting. So it, it, when the time comes, it'll be released. Some things are instant. Some things takes time. 
It depends where your heart is at. And God's working on the heart to get it right so it can be released. Amen? Hallelujah. Your submission to the Holy Spirit will establish you in the Spirit and break the seal of carnality and make the stony heart into flesh. Amen? Okay. Uh, let's go to Philippians 4. Then I have one more. Uh, verse 4. Philippians 4, 4. Where it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for everything, right? Be anxious for nothing. You know, a lot of people, when, when that comes up, they'll be like, yeah, right. Be anxious for nothing. Okay. But I got this to do. Well, I'll tell you what. Go ahead and do it without waiting on the Lord. And see if you got to go back around that mountain again. If the Lord says it, then you need to cooperate with it. Be ancient with nothing but what? Through prayer and supplication, giving, being thankful with thanksgiving. That means you have to be grateful for what you have. Be thankful for what he has done. That you know that he supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory and the anointing. And everything that has been supplied to you. Don't look at somebody else because of what they have. That's what God has provided for them. You don't know what your future has hold for you. You don't know what God has promises that comes to you yet. All you have to do is wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Be of good courage. That means let your heart be settled within him. Trust in him. Abide in him. Follow him. Work it out. As you wait on him, do what's before you. I, I promise you, it's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to. Anything that's worth having, sometimes it's going to be hard for you to get, and you have to work for it hard. But when you get it, you're not going to give it away. How about your freedom? You want to give that away? Some will. Some will. Because they don't appreciate the freedom that they have. Some will because they don't, they forgot the peace that they didn't have. You know, when you lose peace, when you find peace, let's put it this way, when you find peace and you lose it, you wish you had it. I remember being in South Florida. I had money, had drugs, I had all that stuff. I'm sitting on my corner of my bed. Now, this is before I got to total freedom. And I remember sitting on that corner of the bed and said, all I want is some peace. That's all I want is some peace. Because demons don't give you peace. They all bring is turmoil. So remember, the peace that you got, fight to keep it. Because once you lose it, you're going to wish you had it. Amen? Um, let's go to Proverbs 3. I was going to talk about David, but I think we got it. Everybody got it, right? Everybody, everybody's getting it, right? Will you put your trust in? Man, y'all sound like y'all really don't trust him. Will you put your trust in? Man, you better let the devil know. He made you mumble. Say, so will you put your trust in? God. 
Really? Okay. The way trouble times are coming right now, you better have your trust in God. Because things are coming. Be prepared. It's time to get close to him. And don't think that you have time. Time is running short. I know when I was a kid, they said, God is coming soon. 20 years later, I hear, God is coming soon. I'm like, man, I heard that when I was young. I ain't seen him yet. <laughs> With the signs of the times that's going now, and you read your Bible, you know that things, this is a new season of new times. This is a new era of things that are happening. It's not like it used to be. People are not, have, whenever, when we lived on this earth, even through world wars and everything, people still went to work. This is the first time the whole world is being shut down off of something that is false. Because people, people are swayed under the delusion of the evil one. And it's affecting a lot of families. And people are going to be looking for Jesus. And they need somebody that trusts in God to deliver them. When you're desperate enough, you'll seek after him. Everybody in this room was desperate at one time. I remember seeing most of the people that came in this house that needed something more than what they knew. So don't forget that. Don't get swayed by your feelings and how you feel about this world. Because this world will lie to you. Proverbs 3, 5. Where it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as the father, the son, in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gains and fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length the days is in her right hand, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, by understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. My son and daughter, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely on your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror like we have it now. Nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is power of your hands to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it. When you have it with you, do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. 
Why he dwell by you for safety's sake? Because you trust in the Lord. You guys are present of the Lord within you. He keeps you so your neighbor is looking. You gotta understand, you're being watched. All of us are being watched by somebody. Seeing, is it real? Is it real? No, I can't be real. I know that person. He'll never change. Being watched to see if we are a failure in Christ. You know, sinners know about Christians more than, than we do. You say, you can't be a Christian. Why? Look what you're doing. They know. If you're not walking right with Christ. I have seen that happen. You can't be a Christian. Look at how you act. Look what you just said. You're touching the grave with me. I know you ain't a Christian. <laughs> be mindful. Do not strive with man without cause. If he has done you no harm, do not envy the oppressors and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination of the Lord, but his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blessed the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. Amen? So just keep that in fact. When you're around and the enemy is trying to pull you away from faith, just say, in God, I trust. In God, I trust. God, I trust you. I trust you. I, I see what's going on. But I, I don't understand what's going on. But I trust you. I have to trust you because I can't believe in anything else because you're my source. Amen? Amen. Father, we come together right now and we thank you, Lord, for your word. I ask that your word will penetrate within our hearts and that it will bring life into our lives. Lord, I ask that as we step forward, Lord, that you will guide us by your steps. Increase our visions. Increase our dreams. Increase our focus. Increase our hearing. And Lord, most of all, increase our hearts to be available for more of you. So I thank you, Lord, for your word and your truth. And I give you honor and glory for everything you have done in this place for each and every one in here. <laughs>